Leader Hoyer, Slay Synth, and Insert Extraneous Materials Thereon. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. First, I would like to thank the Majority Leader Hoyer, Chairman uh, Waxman, Ranking Member Burton, and the Health Subcommittee Pallone, and of course my colleague from Louisiana, a good baseball player, in support of this resolution. I also want to take the time to thank all colleagues on the House of Representatives for their bipartisan support on this resolution. I rise today in strong support of uh, House Resolution 69, the Latino Diabetes Awareness Resolution. The resolution recognizes the need to continue research in the causes, treatment, education, and eventual care for diabetes, and commend those organizations that are working to increase the awareness of diabetes, conducting research for methods to help patients and families in the Latino community suffering from diabetes. It also congratulates the work of the Latino Diabetes Association for its great effort in education, support, and provide hope for individuals and families who suffer from diabetes. The resolution also supports the designation of July 2009 as Latino Diabetes Awareness Month. It calls upon the people of the United States to observe the month with appropriate programs and activities. It is critical for long-term stability of any health care reform to plan to make sure that steps preventive of disease like diabetes and encouraged by Congress. This prevention of diabetes will do a great deal in helping keep costs down from the current patients as well as favoring the change of attitudes and behavior of diabetes patients and their families, thereby improving the quality of life. We will take a few steps to achieve these goals by passing this resolution here today. Diabetes is critical disease of pancreas and adversely affects the ability to produce and use uh, insulin in the proper way. Diabetes has no cure. Treatment varies from patient to patient and is quite often very painful. And so, as some has side effects of treatments include weight gain, skin rash, itching, various stomach problems, tiredness, dizziness, swelling, legs and ankles. The impact of diabetes is not focused solely by patients, family members and immediate uh, caretakers also suffer greatly from the effect of diabetes and their loved ones. I say from this, from this personal experience, in the Latino community, diabetes can result in high prevalence of food problems, kidney failure, uh, renal disease, blindness, heart attacks, strokes, and eventually death. What's curious in the diabetes patient who needs to be taken care of is for more insulin shots, is for more insulin shots daily, and for whatever reason, do not greatly increase the risk from stroke and heart attack. One of the reasons I believe diabetes is disproportionately affects the Latino community is the lack of sound health communication that speaks to those Hispanics who are most at risk of coming down with diabetes and who already suffer from it. This means targeting communications efforts both in English and in Spanish speaking communities and specifically referring to those efforts towards areas of our culture that put us at risk most are our diets. Over 23.6 million Americans suffer from diabetes and of those 2 million, million are Latinos or Latino descent. 8.6 of all Latinos over the age of 20 live with this disease. Moreover, Latinos are more than likely, twice as likely to have diabetes than non-Latino whites of similar age. Individuals suffering from diabetes can reduce the risk for complications if, if, they educate, if they're educated about their disease and take the appropriate steps to take care of themselves. This means learning and practicing skills necessary to better control their blood cholesterol, blood pressure, and cholesterol level. They must exercise, receive regular checkups, as well as maintain a highly balanced diet, as well as maintaining uh, willingness to change their dangerous eating habits. And that becomes very difficult for a lot of us because we like our, our frijoles, our tortillas, our tamales, our enchiladas, our, our menudo. But we have to put that aside. This could include eating meals, prepared healthier, eating more moderate portions, or a combination of these. Two, two people ought to be uh, commended for their hard work in the attempt to educate the public about diabetes and treatment for patients, and that's actress Rita Torres and Edward Omus. A few years ago, I worked with Rita Torres and Edward to help put together a short documentary enlightening the day-to-day -day activities of different diabetes patients. Regardless of age or ethnicity, and they ought to be recognized for their tireless effort to raise the awareness. I have, I have been affected personally by diabetes through the loss of five members of my immediate family. 
My father was a proud, hardworking man, never missed a day of work for any reason until he was struck down by diabetes. Ultimate needed to have a leg amputated. Originally started with the toe, half a leg, and then the leg itself. My mother also was very strong, was never sick until she too came down with diabetes. My two brothers, Abilio and Tani, and my sister, Annie, fought with diabetes, but ultimately lost their, their battle largely to the, new lack of, uh, to the lack of education and awareness of how the disease would affect their lives and not willing to change their eating habits. Tani recently passed away due to part to the fact that he could no longer afford all necessary treatment to keep his diabetes at bay. He is not the only victim of diabetes, but of the high cost of health care as well. My brother-in-law, Ted Dominguez, was also a victim of diabetes. Ted was a great athlete back in his days, always in great physical shape. His lesson to us is that anyone, regardless of age, weight, or physical condition, can get diabetes. He eventually went into dialysis and ultimately ended up losing his life. Also, a former staff member of mine who was a close friend for many years, Daniel Hernandez, in his testament to us and to many other folks, uh, worked for me because he needed coverage of diabetes. He left my office two years and became independent consultant. He came back, however, approached me one day and told me that the only reason he was willing to come back to work was to qualify for health care benefits that he would not be able to cover otherwise. In his fight and their example that opened my eyes to the horrid realities, the difficulties of the disease, and the need for education and awareness about uh, diabetes, ultimately to introduce this resolution. However, a great diabetes stories uh, are a perfect example to prove that diabetes can be beat. Supreme Court nominee Sonia Sotomayor, uh, Judge Sotomayor, was diagnosed, was diagnosed and has lived with type 1 diabetes since the age of eight years of age. Due to carefully monitoring her condition, she fought the disease head on and continues to be a great example of someone who can live with the diabetes. She will soon not only be the first Latina to become the Justice Supreme Court, but also the first Latina with type 1 diabetes. Another example of remarkable type 1 diabetes is patient Sarah Rodriguez. Sarah Rodriguez, a constituent of mine, raising as a junior at Ranch Cucamonga, a straight A student, a letter winner in basketball, volleyball, and track. In order for Sarah to lead a normal teenage life as possible, she must be tested, her blood sugar level, eight to 20 times per day every day. Sarah will never outgrow the disease and will require care and medication for the rest of her life. She is a very brave and courageous young woman whose fight and determination should not only be an example to diabetes patients everywhere, but to anyone facing adversity. On behalf of all of the other people like Sarah Rodriguez, Congress recently authorized special diabetes program. This is a wonderful example of the government's commitment to cure diabetes for people like Sarah and millions of others whose life with a disease and its complication. This program funds $150 million a year in type 1 di uh, diabetes research and is aligned with the goal of this resolution to keep us on the path towards cure for diabetes. Yet another great example of a person living a healthy life with diabetes example, Raquel Martin, the grandfather of Matt Gomez, one of my interns who has been instrumental in assisting with this resolution. Raquel was diagnosed with diabetes over 25 years ago and continues to live a healthy life even at the age of, of 78. He eats right, checks his blood level, sugar time three times a day, and is a great example how long, along with Sarah and Judge Sotomayor, for all diabetes patients with proper care, the diet and exercise, one can survive this diabetes. That is why it is so important to pass this resolution, which I've introduced in hope of bringing awareness to those lucky enough not to have to face the disease firsthand or through the fight of the loved one. It takes a small but a critical first step to help raise the awareness about diabetes, not only for the Latino community, but for all Americans and all individuals impacted with diabetes. But also, it's a giant step for those individuals that have suffered from diabetes for many years and lack the ability to tell their story firsthand, along with families and immediate uh, caretakers of diabetes patients who oftentimes suffer the impact of the disease more than the patient themselves. Diabetes is a disease that, that can and does affect anyone. Democrats, Republicans, black, white, Latinos, Asians, American Indians, all nationalities. This alarming statistic regard, regarding diabetes are on the rise. 
with greater scope of health care debate, there is no better time to raise the awareness for preventable disease than right now. And there is no better time than right now to stress that no diabetes patient should be denied health care coverage because of the pre-existing condition. For this reason, I ask you to stand with me and fight against this, this diabetes and pass this resolution. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Louisiana. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of HRES 69 and want to congratulate the gentleman from California on his leadership on this bill, uh, building a bipartisan coalition.